Oh, come on, can we get it? Yeah, we can! Oh, beautiful! Good day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. Today guys, we're going to be continuing our series of class guides about getting our teeth sunk into the good old Light Assault. These Repskillians bring a very unique dynamic to the battlefield and can have a massive impact when played right but in turn can be one of the more challenging classes to play due to their emphasis on positioning and the ability to know the battlefield rim. So for those who are new to the series, we will start off by going through a quick overview of the class at hand, followed by going over all of the equipment available to it, then discuss some rapid fire tips and tricks to make the most of your time while using the light assault, and then finally go over some of my loadouts that I use and what I suggest you guys to use. However, before we we do get into the loadouts in this video, I do want to spend some time, a short amount of time at that, going over a technique with the light assault called jump pad drifting to take your movement to the next level in this game and really get to some positions that you didn't think were possible once before. We already have gone over the engineer and the medic in this series and you can find links to those in the description and linked in a card on the top right hand of the screen right now as well. But for now guys, we've got a guide to do, so let's get into an overview of the Light Assault. So, this class is responsible for arguably some of the most chaotic scenes as well as some of the most devastating flanks available in this game. Got killed from a position that you didn't expect? Chances are, it was a Light Assault at work. Unlike the last two classes we've covered, this class doesn't come with many supportive roles in mind, but it does come with an incredibly powerful ability, a jump jack pack. Now the ability gives the light assault the means to quickly traverse obstacles that other classes would normally be stopped by. They essentially turn the battlefield into their personal playground for mischief. Is your allied Sundra parked up against a wall that you simply can't be bothered to find a way around? And they have many ways to traverse said wall as well with different jump jets. In addition to that, light assaults are also some of the best saboteurs on the battlefield with their rocklet rifles and C4 armaments and can quickly become a nightmare for vehicle and max assaults when combined with their verticality. This is a class for the slightly craftier player who looks to take advantage of verticality to another level when engaging the enemy. And with that, let's go over the tools that allow the light assault to be the menace that they can be on the battlefield. Now, normally I would start us off with the tool slot, but the light assault's bread and butter comes from their ability slot, aka their jump jets, so we're going to start off with those. As opposed to having the ability bound to their F key, their light assault jump jets are activated by holding the jump key once you're airborne, and alas, you will start flying to the heavens. Now, the jump jets come in a total of four variants, and we're going to start off with the skirmisher jump jets. These are the default jump jets that you've unlocked as you create your character, and are the most universally applicable jump jets to the situations you will come across. The skirmishers will propel your character vertically when activated over a sustained burn, but in addition to that you can also use your movement keys to give yourself some serious airborne control to get to where you actually want to go in the first place. Now the skirmishers have a fuel tank that lasts a total of 5 seconds per burn and takes around 8 seconds to recharge from empty, but each upgrade on these jump jets does increase the fuel capacity and the regeneration speed by a decent amount, so that actually turns the tide in the favour of having more burn time for less recharge time. Now our next jump jet here puts us on course for some more situational jump jets in the arsenal, starting us off with the drifters. Now drifter jump jets sacrifice a lot of vertical thrust in favour of horizontal thrust. To be more specific, if you activate these jump jets without pressing any of your movement keys, your character will very slowly, and I mean very slowly, begin to gain some altitude, but you'll very quickly become a hovering target for enemies that are a bit wary, so keep that in mind. The real benefit instead comes from when you press your movement keys. You will actually see yourself move at an incredibly fast horizontal speed, and in addition to that, while you're burning these jets, you will descend incredibly slowly, which allows for you to cover great distances with ease while maintaining altitude. This does require you to launch off a location of high altitude to get the most out of the jets, however, 
Every upgrade for these jets increases their efficiency, giving them an increased airtime, maxing out at 30 seconds from the original 15 seconds that come from the stock jets. Next up, we move to the opposite end of the spectrum, the Icarus jump jets. These bad boys will give you very little horizontal movement abilities, but my god, you are basically a NASA test rocket when you're wearing these things because you better know that you're going to shoot up fast while wearing them. This does come at the cost of in-air maneuverability, as I said before, and fuel capacity, sort of being more of a quality over quantity kind of jump jet. These are great if you need to scale vast vertical obstacles quickly, but they do limit your ability to reach positions unless you are, quite frankly, right under them. So... Yeah, keep that in mind. Each level of upgrade here only impacts the fuel regeneration rate, and if I'm being completely honest, these are the jets that are probably the least useful in the game as of right now. I personally don't have any loadouts right now where I use them, and you'll see that as we discuss loadouts later on. The last ones on the list here, well, let's just say that we've certainly saved the most chaotic for last. The best? Well, other community members like Mulkas may say so. These are the Ambusher Jump Jets. And the ambushes are interesting in the sense that they very quickly and very aggressively shoot you forwards in a quick burst based on the direction that you are moving before you hit the launch button. Now interestingly, these jets must recharge fully before you can use them again, which makes them a big old risk to use if you get it wrong, but can create some of the most chaotic scenes you will ever bear witness to in this game, and we will discuss more on that later. Each rank of upgrades for these jets reduces the pesky cooldown time, which will be important to minimize for these things if you need to get out of a situation quickly. Anyway, moving off of the ability slot, we arrive at the tool slot, where we have the rocket rifle. Now, this is actually one of the most recent additions to the light assault that gives them some added anti-vehicular capabilities. This little beastie has a few quirks, including the ability to either fire in a single round fire mode by using a standard left mouse click, or exchanging accuracy for fire rate by using your right mouse button to unleash an entire six round magazine in quick succession with a larger spread on your rounds. In addition to that, the Rocket Rifle maintains its normal accuracy while you're mid-air, which gives you an insane amount of anti-vehicle capabilities out of the gate with this class while you're using this thing, all the while being able to maintain mobility, so it's a real pain in the ass to vehicle users. In addition, its default ammo type does come with some flak behavior in the sense that firing near passing enemy aircraft will actually cause the rounds to act like flak rounds, which is pretty neat. While there are no upgrades for the tool itself, you can buy two ammo types which allow for you to improve the damage on direct hits and sacrifice the flak characteristic, or locklets, which will actually let you lock onto enemy vehicles with the rocket rifle. Personally, I don't see much of a need to get these new ammo types, I find the basic ones more than fine. As far as the class suit slots are concerned, we have access to the standard suit slots being advanced shield capacitor, which is actually available to the class by default here, ammunition belt, which also has its first level certed into for free, flak armor, grenade bandolier, and nanoweave armor, but we also have access to the flight suit, munitions pouch, and adrenaline pump. Flight suit is an entirely unique slot to the light assault and increases the maximum fuel on most of your jump jets while decreasing the recharge time on the ambushes, while the munitions pouch on the light assault is all about giving you just that little bit more ammo to boot on your rocket rifle. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most useful slots for this class is unlocked by default, the advanced shield capacitor. Considering the fast playstyle you have here with this thing, it's going to really help you in minimizing downtime and ensuring that you can stay in battle for longer. Grenades wise, the light assault actually comes with some grenades that you would expect to see in your more conventional shooters. You know, we've gone through healing grenades and repairing grenades, and now we're actually down to your more conventional grenades, that being the flash grenade, the quick detonation flash grenade, and the smoke grenade. Flash grenades, as expected, will blind and deafen opponents in a blast radius, but there is something I only just learned while writing this video. It also increases the minimum cone of fire of enemies by 20%. So, that's something to keep in mind there. I noticed that and I thought, actually, flash grenades have become rather powerful now. These have a 3 second fuse time, but the quick detonation flash grenades have a 1.5 second fuse time at the cost of not affecting enemy accuracy, so decide what's more important to you in the long run. Smoke grenades, 
well, this one's kind of obvious here. Throw this down and boom, ninja smoke is essentially it. <laughs> as far as your utilities are concerned, there's nothing really that special here. It's available to most classes. We have access to the standard slew of options being the restoration kits, the med kits, auxiliary shield, and C4. But the real magic here is the amazing things you can do with the C4 on this class. Let's just leave it at there for now. Anyway, that's the Light Assault as far as its gear is concerned. Easily the most mobile class in the game, and while it may seem like a fairly simple class to play as far as the customizability is concerned, when you compare it to something like the Engineer, this class has one of the highest skill ceilings in the game. The possibilities are endless. So, we are probably best going over some of the tips and tricks to make the most of the Light Assault class. Tip number one, and this may sound a little bit too obvious, but I need to say it. A grounded light assault is a dead light assault. Your jump jets here are your bread and butter, and without making use of them, you are an outgunned and underpowered heavy assault. Whenever you play this class, you should be looking at opportunities to flank using your added verticality. Tip number two, as the light assault, you have the important role of taking out enemy units before their allies can react to you. Targeting medics, engineers, and if you have the C4 for it, max suits can be the make or break in fights and halting an enemy squad's momentum. Pick your fights, make the most of your flanks. Tip number three, never sit in one spot on a rooftop for more than one, maybe two kills at max, especially with the new kill cam system in play. Players you kill will know exactly where you are when you kill them, so sitting in a position happily farming away will only last you so long. Keep an enemy guessing and engage from multiple angles regularly. Tip number four, consider your sight lines and where enemies can get the jump on you. In these raised positions, you're going to have new lines of sight on your enemies, this is true, but that goes both ways. If you're engaging from a raised position, be sure to frequently break the line of sight between hostiles you want to engage against so you've got some cover. Tip number five, try to get a little creative with your spots as well. Look for little nooks and crannies that you can abuse that enemies will not expect. You'll find more rewarding positions the more creative you get as time goes on. And just to follow up on that, tip number six, learn your base layouts. Learn where there's these different hiding points, learn where there's these different entrances where you can engage from, and learn how to move around these. As a light assault, if you start to be engaged and you need to make a run for it, you are one of the most likely classes in the game to escape. With your jump jets, you can literally make anything out of a base here. So learn how buildings are laid out, learn how towers are made out, and learn how your major facilities are laid out so that you can make the most of the different angles that you'll come across. Tip number seven, while you're starting out, focus on upgrading the skirmish jump jets and avoid the others. As we said, these jump jets are the most flexible option you have and are great to learn with. All the other jump jets are very situational or have very high skill flaws, which means that they're a little bit more difficult to use for a newer player. Tip number eight, on the topic of skirmisher jump jets, if your goal with them is to cross more distance instead of gain height, learn to burst them to make the most of what fuel you actually have access to here. There's nothing worse than doing one continuous long burn, not making it the distance you intended to, and falling to your death because you actually climbed a stupid amount of height when you needed more length. Just keep that in mind. Tip number nine, if you really want to cause mayhem here, definitely certain to C4. I've said it earlier, but we're going to say it again. The verticality of the light assault means that ambushing max suits and vehicles has become one of its key roles on the battlefield, and the C4 is integral to that role. The light assault is also a well-known sunderer busting class, and while C4 is an expensive investment, I promise you it'll pay for itself very fast as you continue to use it. Tip number 10, if you are playing as a squad leader, play the light assault to get your spawn beacon into locations that are harder to reach for enemies, and you know, gives your squad a new landing zone to drop in and flank from. One light assault is normally bad enough on a flank. Imagine what happens when a whole squad emerges from that said flank using a spawn beacon, or even from a router. Tip number 11, as we mentioned earlier, the Rocklet rifle's accuracy remains untouched while midair. Carbines actually follow the same rule. If you're approaching an enemy while jump jetting, some controlled bursts with your weapon can score a really lucky kill, and in fact, it's fairly reliable to at least score some damage on a target before you land. 
Any weapon here that is known for great hip fire is actually an excellent mid-air combatant kind of weapon. And tip number 12 on the topic of the rocket rifle, I would honestly recommend only using the volley mode 9 times out of 10. The single fire mode on it fires incredibly slowly and leaves you exposed for far too long if you want to use all your rounds out on one target. Kind of contradicts the whole mobility side of the light assault, so yeah, stick to the volley fire mode and honestly, the Rockler Rifle is best used at CQC anyway, and not at a range where, you know, the single fire mode would make more sense. So, continue to use that volley mode only. So, there you have it guys, some rapid fire tips and tricks for the Light Assault. Now, I know there is a lot to cover with the Light Assault, and we probably didn't do it all here, so I invite everyone who's an experienced Light Assault player to share some tips and tricks down below. Now, before we get into the loadout section of today's video, I would like to quickly mention the joys of jump pad drifting as a light assault. A little technique I use, and anyone can use, to quickly reach new areas and vantage points from a great distance away at certain bases. So, jump pad drifting essentially makes use of two separate components. The jump pads you'll find at bases, which act as your primary form of propulsion and momentum, and your jump jets that are on your back, which will act as your method of steering. It is worth noting that this technique can only really be done with skirmisher jump jets and drifters, but the secret comes from aiming your character towards the anchor point in which you want to turn around. If you aim to where you want to go and activate your jump jets, you will quickly kill all of your momentum that you gained from your propulsion from the jump pads. By aiming towards the anchor point of your turn, you will keep your momentum and you'll make some incredibly impressive distances that connect you up to parts of the bases that you aren't previously you weren't previously available to do in one swift jump. Here's a clip to show you what it's like when it's done well. So yeah, that's a little something that I knew this guide wouldn't be complete without and I hope it helps you guys out a bit as well in game. But now we've got some loadouts to go over so let's quickly discuss what loadouts you can create with your light assault. My first loadout here is pretty much my go-to light assault loadout, the rooftop skirmisher. This is pretty much my go-to light assault for any combat situation that I come across where I don't need to be entirely specialized. It's designed to remain highly mobile with very little downtime before getting back into a fight. It's also a great class for running in a squad with, supporting them by scoring flanks on unsuspecting enemies. And the best part here is the fact that it isn't really that expensive to get the basic building blocks ready to go. Hell, the standard carbines that are available to each faction in the form of the AF-19 Mercenary, the Track 5 and the Solstice are the ones that I would recommend here because they simply are the most adaptable carbines in the class and give you the methods and the means to really deal with anything at most ranges that you come across. In addition, we also have the skirmisher jump jets to tackle any obstacle we come across with little issues, as well as the advanced shield capacitor to reel in those shield regen times to ensure that when you have someone on your back, you can retaliate against them as quickly as possible. C4 is an obvious winner here too, because who doesn't like blowing up max suits and vehicles from above? No one, exactly right. In addition to that, the survivalist implant here helps to give you that little bit of an ability to break away from the less than ideal engagements and regen your shields faster, but the regeneration implant will also allow for you to take some downtime to heal yourself up if you're feeling a little bit worse for wear. Now, let's just say you're farming up a tower and you want to bring a loadout that is really built for vertical playgrounds. Well, my tower stomping loadout makes use of the same jump jet as the loadout prior, but we instead pick up a CQC orientated carbine, something like the GD7F, LC2 Lynx, or the Serpent VE92, but things don't stop there. I know we love our C4 as much as the next guy, but for tower stomping, medkits are going to be your friend here. You are probably going to be more disconnected from your squad than you've ever been, and this will let you heal up quickly while not leaving yourself at the mercy of a slower heal that comes from regeneration. You're also going to be far from allied ammo packs, and while yes, towers normally have some enemy ammo packs that you can steal from, you don't want to be dependent on those. 
So, we're going to be making use of not only the ammunition belt suit slot, but also the ammo printer implant. Because in a perfect world, you're going to be in that tower for a while. So, we're going to need all the ammo you can get. Survivalist will still give you that little bit of extra of picking me up if you need it, and we're going to keep that implant on this loadout. Next up, I bring you the surprise loadout. Now, I'm sure many experienced players saw this one coming. This loadout is all about making the most of those ambush and jump jets to perform some of the most vicious guerrilla warfare attacks possible in this game. Get in, blast some fools with a pump action shotgun and get out fast. I want to make an additional note here that this loadout is very much built for the experienced players of you all. It's a punishing loadout that when things go wrong, and there is going to be a lot of trial and error here to get things right, but things do go very wrong when they do go wrong here. Anyway, the primary weapon should definitely be your favourite pump action shotgun. I personally like taking the GD66 Claw, which would be the TRS-12 Uppercut or the Phobos VX86 for those on the TR and the VS respectively. And the rest of the loadout, ladies and gentlemen, is entirely focused on complementing those ambush or jump jets. We bring the flight suit suit slot, as well as the aerial combatant implant slot, to help reduce the recharge time on these jets considerably to make yourself incredibly more mobile on the battlefield if you can snare a couple of kills. Oh, and because we still hate maxes and vehicles as much as the next guy does, and as much as we did before the last loadout, we're still going to bring C4. I also have an ASP point sunk into this loadout to bring an SMG secondary to the party as well, which I will say is a very powerful addition to this build. This can be, without a doubt, one of the most enjoyable loadouts in the game, but does require a lot of investment to make it work. So make this a long-term project. Oh, in addition to that, safe fall. Bring safe fall, otherwise you will come across situations where the launch from your ambush or jump jets will actually end up hurting you. And lastly, let's just say you're the chaotic neutral of your outfit and you just hate everyone equally, friendly or foe. Here is my Agent of Chaos build. The presence of the exceptional infravision implant here makes this an endgame piece, but holy shit, combine this with the Hunter QCX crossbow with smoke bolts, a grenade bandolier with forced total smoke grenades, and a CQC SMG like the Cyclone or something like that, you have the capacity to confuse a whole platoon and go to town while you can still see as clear as day. Just find an elevated position, launch off of that with some drifted jump jets, and coat the area below in smoke. Then just land in it and have fun. Enjoy the crazed farm as you laugh maniacally on your quest to earn a crap ton of certs off of your enemy's panic. And ladies and gentlemen, with all that said, that wraps up a very, very, very long class guide for the light assault but guys i intend to make these as informative as possible going over as many mechanics as possible as well so guys i really really hope you found today's video enjoyable if you did a backhanding of that like button would be greatly appreciated and if you find yourselves new to the channel be sure to backhand the subscribe button whilst you're at it to keep up to date with all things that i am releasing in the future for planet side 2 escalation update is upon us guys so exciting things to look forward to there as well all my relevant social media links are in the description down below as well as my YouTube membership join link if you are, would like to support the channel just that little bit further. Once again guys I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care guys. Have a good one.